Today let us see the design of isolated square footing. Footing which is provided under individual columns separately then it is called a isolated footing. In this problem for design of isolated footing the data given are size of column is given 400 mm by 400 mm which is a square column. So we have to design footing as square footing. Based on the shape of the column provided we have to decide the shape of footing. Next axial service load is given as 1000 kilo Newton. Next safe bearing capacity of soil SPC which is given as 200 kilo Newton per meter square. For footing M20 grade of concrete we are using in this problem and Fe4 and 5 grade of steel we are using. Next for a design of footing first step is to calculate the amount of load on footing. We know that axial service load is given as 1000 kilo Newton. Then ultimate load we will get it by multiplying by 1.5. Then 1500 kilo Newton we will get. Then self weight of footing and backfills which is taken as 10% of column load. So 10% of service load is 1000 is 100. So total load on footing we will get it as 1100 kilo Newton. After finding the load on footing the next step is to find the size of footing. For square footing area of footing which is equal to total load divided by SPC of soil. Total load we calculated as 1100. Then SPC we considered as 200 kilo Newton per meter square. Then area of footing we will get it as 5.5 meter square. Since I told it is a square footing so under root of 5.5 total area then we will get 2.345 meter. Hence we heard of size of footing as 2.4 meter by 2.4 meter. Next step is to find net upward soil pressure. Net upward soil pressure which is denoted by QU which is equal to total factored load divided by area provided. The factored load is 1500 and area provided is 5.76. Then net upward soil pressure QU will get it as 260.41 kN per meter square. It means 0.26 Newton per mm square pressure from the soil act upward for the provided area of the footing. Next step is to find the depth of footing based on shear criteria because in most cases footing fail by shear. So shear is considered for depth calculation. The distance D from column phase is taken as critical section for one way shear. The factored shear force which is given by formula VU1 which is equal to QU multiplied by B by 2 into B minus of C1 minus of here QU is soil pressure that is 0.26 and B is the width of the footing that is 2.4 meter and C1 is the size of the column 400 mm and D is depth of the footing we have to find it. If we substitute values and simplify we will get one equation. So let us name this as equation 1. Next to find the resistance one way shear force. To find the resistance shear force we have to find the design shear strength value. For that we have to assume the percentage of steel in case of footing. Here we are assuming the percentage of steel PT which is equals to 0.25%. So from table 19 of IS456 for 0.25% of steel we will get design shear strength as 0.36 Newton per mm square. Then one way shear resistance VC1 which is equals to the design shear strength tau C multiplied with B into D. If you substitute the value we will get one equation. Let us name this equation as equation number 2 and by equating both the equations we get effective depth value as approximately equals to 420 mm. Then clear cover for a footing we are assuming as 80 mm. Then overall depth of a footing will get it as 500 mm. Now we got a size of footing and the depth of footing. The next step is to find the area of steel required. Before that we will check whether the provided depth is safe against punching shear or two way shear. The distance d by 2 from the face of column is taken as critical section for two way shear. Factor shear force in case of two way shear which is given by a formula VU2 which is equal to QU multiplied with B square minus of C plus D whole the square. Here QU is net soil fold pressure which is 0.26 Newton per mm square and B square is the area of the footing. So 2400 whole square minus of C1 
it means the size of column 400 mm plus d effective depth value we got it by using one way shear calculation that is 420 whole the square then we'll get factor shear force as 1322.77 kilo newton then the punching are two way shear resistance which is given by a formula vc2 which is equals to ks tau c into b naught multiplied with d here ks is a constant which is equals to 0 0.5 plus bc but not greater than 1 so we are considered as 1 next tau c design shear strength tau c which is equals to 0 0.25 multiplied with root of fck in case of limit state design so here FCK characteristic compressive strength of a concrete we are considered as 20. So tau C will get it as 1.118 Newton per mm square. Next B naught. B naught is taken as critical perimeter which is equals to 4 times the column dimension plus the depth of the footing. If you substitute the value then we will get 2 way shear resistance VC2 as 1540.15 kN. Since the resisting shear VC2 which is greater than the shear we got it. Hence the depth provided is safe against the punching shear or 2 way shear. If not we have to increase the depth of footing to resist the two way shear. The next step is to find the area of steel required. The ultimate bending moment at column phase. Here, the bending moment at AF, which is given by MU, which is equals to QU by 8 multiplied with B into B minus of C1 whole the square. If we substitute the value in this formula, then we will get ultimate moment MU as 312 kilonewton meter. By using this moment, we will find the area of steel by using this formula which is given in IS456 and by substituting all the values we will get AST area required as 2152.90 mm square. Let us assume we are providing 16 mm diameter bars. Area of single 16 mm diameter bar which is equal to 201.06 mm square. Then number of bars required we will get it as area required divided by area of single bar. If we substitute the value then we will get 10.7 number of bars required. We cannot provide 10.7 number of bars. So we will make it as 11 number of bars we are providing. Then actual area we are providing we will get it as 2211.68 mm square. Next for this area 11 number of 16 mm diameter bars spacing we will get it as the area of single 16 mm bar divided by area the actual area multiplied with B. Then we will get the spacing as approximately equals to 220 mm. Here in this way we are providing the 16 mm diameter bars at 220 mm center to center in both the directions that is along the length of the footing and width of the footing. If you have any doubt let me know in comment section. Please subscribe to Civil Today and like and share the video. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.